Whipping men join for a night, joy comes in the morning and welcome everybody, it's a new day, it's a Monday and this is the Freedom Day, we're celebrating Freedom Day in South Africa and uh, good morning to everyone and thank you so very much this morning for tuning in to Mana TV live streaming on Facebook where we say Whipping men join for a night but joy comes in the morning. This morning friends, I just want to share with us, uh, set a tone for the week and trusting that uh, you're going to have a great and an awesome week while we are on our lockdown and uh, i posted on my um, wall i posted a mother who is a medical doctor and a son who uh, was um, tested who tested positive of uh, this covid 19 uh, condition and uh, you see the boy struggling for days struggling to breathe struggling so much a four-year-old and uh, the mother having to be isolated together with the boy and it's a very it's a very horrifying and very painful scene to watch and even to listen and i just want to encourage you to watch it and uh, learn from it because you don't want to see a child suffering and struggling to breathe like you have seen that young boy and thank god that he made it and uh, he recovered but family I did that so that um, I remind you, more especially as we continue on our lockdown, because it is not a sweet um, exercise to be on lockdown, but it is a very, very important exercise that can save lives and that can uh, alleviate the burden to health workers. Because while um, we're living every day and our actions and our decisions they don't end with us, but they affect the next people and our medical personnel, our health workers. I must be honest with you, while you take any decision, while you want to do anything, think because the end of the day you must land in their hands. That is why I, I always say when you protect yourself, you're protecting your family. And when you protect your family, you are protecting your nation. So family... I just want uh, I just wanted us to look at that and I want you to go through it and see a child struggling because one thing for sure is I can endanger my children I can get endanger my family through my uh, actions and uh, but what I want us to look at uh, while we continue uh, building on building strong families today I want just to deviate from that and just share with us just for today as we set the tone for the week because of course like i said pastor Jolene will be coming forth and then will be sharing with us so we will it's not a series that must continue without any interruption no but it's a beginning of a new week and i want us to look at the psalm or psalm uh, 103 verses 1 to 5 and i want to title my encouragement to you family this morning count your blessings and name them one by one count your blessings the psalm reads praise the lord my soul all my being praise the holy name praise his holy name praise the lord my soul and do not forget how kind he is he forgives all your my sins he heals all my diseases he keeps me from the grave and blesses me with love and mercy he fills my life with good things so that i stay young and strong like an eagle you know i read it today in the good news so that it's so simple for everyone to hear praise the lord my soul this man is calling a conference with his soul he's calling a conference with his mind with his intellect with his emotions with his feelings he's calling a meeting with his entire self he says bless the lord oh my soul and all my being please bless the lord praise his holy name praise the lord my soul and do not forget how kind he is do not forget all the goodness of the lord the kindness of the lord he forgives all your sins he heals you, you from all your diseases he keeps me from uh, the grave and blesses me with love and mercy he fills my life with good things so that i stay young and strong like an eagle count your blessings this morning i just want to bring this message to you my dear brothers and sisters and families and even children count your blessings you know it reminds me 
uh, one of the movies by Taylor Perry, which are very touchy. I think, if I'm not mistaken, is why did I get married? You know, you have got uh, these couples that have got uh, different issues and struggles, and uh, and uh, the, you know all their dating and and all that. But two of them, one of the wife of one uh, husband, who also they had issues, but you know what? Who was willing to build a family? Now she comes to these two ladies that have offended their husbands. They have their husbands went away one a husband just left and another one the husband moved out and you know this lady told them ladies why are you here and they said no and and where are your husband they said we don't want to hear anything about them and she said to them be realistic be honest don't lie to yourselves and she gave them an assignment which i want to bring to you today she said to them okay if your husband are that bird let's make it clear I'll give you a paper and I give you a paper. This side of the paper, write all the bad things about your husband. On the other side, write all the good things. And if the good outweighs the bad, then decide and decide properly. If the bad outweighs the good, I'll say, then call it a quit. And guess what? Each one of them, while they were writing the, 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 the bad things that the, husband, uh, the husbands were doing, they could not feel the page. But when they come to the good things, they realize that they could feel a page. How true this is. In life, sometimes we are attracted and we exaggerate the bad that comes our way. We exaggerate the pain. We exaggerate the wrong things that comes our way. That is why people have the audacity. Couples have the audacity even to say, you're the worst thing that ever happened in my life. Forgetting all the good things or forgetting all the, uh, the, the, the sacrifices forgetting the journey that they've taken with that man or that woman. Why? Because it's easy to exaggerate the wrong things. People or this life somehow does not allow us to think uh, just casually about the good things that the next person does. But it makes us think casually and easily so about the bad things the next person has done. To an extent that as I, as I counsel couples sometimes, you listen to the wife talking about their husband and you, you are tempted to say, how did you survive with this monster for the rest of your life? And then comes the husband and when he tells you the story, you think, how did you survive such a horrible life? But the truth is that people easily relate bad story and they are able to dramatize it but people do not relate good stories so those couples you know what happened or those women you know what happened they realize that the good outweighs the bird and i'm saying today when i say count your blessings and name them one by one i'm trying to say family learn to bless the lord learn to call a conference with yourself to bless the Lord and forget not the good things that God has done for you. The first good thing that the Lord has done, he forgives our sins. Even if you are not born again, I want you to know, even if you might be the chief among the sinners, God says, come to me. You know, come, let's reason together. God is willing to, for, to, forget, to forgive and forget your sins. Now, he forgives your sin. I want you to know, there is no blessing than to have your sins forgiven. If you don't understand, go and listen to those people who by mistake committed crime, not a serial cri cri crime com cri criminals, but I'm talking of people who, because of anger, because they snapped, they did something that landed them in prison. When they are pardoned, when they are given a, a parole, you know what? They are so grateful because their lives came to a standstill while they did not even realize that they were, they, they applied for it you know i want you to know there's nothing so so releasing and so liberating than for you to know that the guilt is taken away to know that the stigma is taken away and that is why the forgiveness of our sins is the biggest thing is the greatest things thing that the lord our god has done for you and it says he will heals you all your diseases you're sitting today you at this age i don't care how old you are we saw that young boy four years old struggling fighting covid19 and you know what bless the lord the young 
boy made it and he came out. He's got a story to tell. I want you to know, I don't, I don't care your age, but I know you have got a story to tell. God has been good to you. God, you know, and I must be honest with you, some did not make it. Some of the, the, the boy's age could not make it, but by God's grace, the boy made it. And by God's grace, you made it to where you are today. You made it to your age today. You made it to where you are today. So I'm saying to you, friends, I'm saying to your family, please understand a human heart is like an ocean. It cannot be satisfied. But one thing that the, the human heart must learn to do is to bless the Lord, is to count your blessings. My brother, my sister, count your blessings. See what the Lord has done. See what the Lord has given you. Appreciate the Lord for what he has done. Thank God for your family. Thank God for your life. Thank God for your health. Thank God. You know, some of you, you watching me, you manage in conditions. Some people who had the very same conditions could not live to this far or could not live to your age. But you know what? You made it to this age. You survived. Some people, they even, they've written, they've written you off and said, that one will not finish this year. But look at you. Sometimes, even medically, they told you, you are not going to make it this year. But you look at you, you made it. Learn to bless the Lord. Learn to worship the Lord. Learn to glorify God. Learn to see the goodness of the Lord. Learn to count your blessings. I must be honest with you, friends. Your heart will always seek for more. Your heart will always dream more. Your heart will always want to reach out. But don't let that blind you. Don't let that, that uh, uh, make you short-sighted and not see what God has done. Learn to bless the Lord like the psalmist who says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. And forget not his benefits. Forget not what the Lord has done. How he renews even your youth. How how he, he forgives your sins, how he heals your diseases. I must be honest, family. I sit here, I have got testimonies. I've got testimonies of the goodness of God. I've come this far by the goodness of the Lord. I've come this far by the grace of God. It was by grace that I came this far. It, it is by grace that I was even saved. It is by grace that I have a family today. It is by grace that I'm called a pastor today. Friends, bless the Lord. Count your blessings and name them one by one. Don't look down upon what the Lord has done because of the little or because of your, your dreams, your desires, and squash yourself. That is why even when we start with this great week, I want you to know when you start counting your blessings, you will realize that it is right for you to observe the lockdown rules. It is right for you to stay at home. It is right for you to keep on washing your hands. It is right for you to use soap when you wash your hands. It is right for you to use sanitizers. It is right for you to use a mask even though it obscure your beauty because that beauty, you have this beauty because you are alive. The moment you leave this body, the body will not have the beauty again. You will be able to, to, to observe so social distance because you will understand the Lord has been so good to me. But if you don't count your blessings, you'll say, I'm tired of this. How will I survive? How will this and that? I want to say to you, family, count your blessings. Name them one by one. Bless the Lord. See what the Lord has done already in your life. He woke you up this morning in your right mind. Look at you. You woke up. Look at your family. You woke up because God has been so good to you. Having said that, friends, I want to pray with us all and to pray for, with all our frontliners as they wake up this morning. It is not like you. You and I might be impatient of just staying at home, but they are waking up to the horror of facing head on fighting this COVID-19 condition. We pray in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you this morning as I pray for this man, this woman, this couple, my Lord and God, as I pray for these children this morning, my prayer, Lord, is that help us, Lord, to count our blessings. Help us, Lord, to see what you've already given us. Help us, Lord, to see your good hand upon our lives. And I pray, Lord, that as we wake up this morning, as sometimes we look at little things and exaggerate them, my Lord and God, I pray and lift before you our health workers and lift before you our government and lift before you those who are the front line in this battle, my Lord and God, who goes all out to save life, lives while they put their lives in danger. It is my prayer today, Father, that you keep them, that you protect them. Our doctors, our nurses, those, our health workers in different circles, those, those that are going out on mobile screening and testing, my Lord and God, those who are cleaning in hospitals, my Lord and God, it is our prayer this morning. Keep, protect them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
of Nazareth, the son of the living God. We thank you, Father, and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Family, thank you so very much. Have a great and an awesome week. Remember, we'll meet here on Whipping May Endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And in the evening, we'll also be here to encourage you. God bless you and have a great and an awesome week. Don't forget, count your blessings. Name them one by one. We love you with the love of the Lord. Thank you.